Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that y'all are doing great. We are going to do Psalm 13 tonight, and I was trying to do a live on YouTube, but I guess I'm going to have to figure it out. I'm going to have to figure it out. I used to be able to do that. Before COVID, you could do lives on YouTube. Now they have all these restrictions, and I don't know. So anyway, all right, well, let's go to God in prayer, and then we will read Psalms 13, and I really don't have anything uh, else to read, but sometimes the Holy Spirit takes me other places, so we shall see. Hope you had an awesome Sunday today. I did have an awesome Sunday today. All right. Well, let's pray. God, we just thank you, God, for all the many things that you do, that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. And everything that's going on, it seems so overwhelming. It seems so... We just want to panic, but God, you know everything that's going on, and you have a purpose and plan for everything, so all we need to do is trust you. We thank you that you are our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. You are our shelter in the storm, and you are our strength and refuge. You are our everlasting Father, and you will always be. God, we thank you because you are magnificent and mighty and miraculous and powerful. God, and you are the righteous judge. You cannot be bought. You cannot be compromised and you cannot be threatened. And God, there will be a day where you will pour your wrath out on unrighteousness. But now, today is the day of salvation. Right now, right this second is the time of salvation. God, we thank you because you are caring and loving and kind and compassionate. You are faithful. You are patient, God. You want none to perish. You want absolutely none to perish. You want all to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and to accept this gift of salvation that you so freely gave. God, we just thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. God, we pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for the prodigals to come home. We just pray for them to return to you and to repent and to just um, never stray again. God, we pray for all the disasters, all the things that are going on, all the wars, all the rumors of wars, the uh, storms, the flooding, the droughts, the volcanoes, the um, earthquakes, all the many things that are going on. God, there are so many right now, right this second. We pray, God, for you to meet the needs of all of these people, God, that you would send people that would be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus, so that these people can be saved and that they can have their needs met. We pray, God, for all the many people that have lost loved ones. There are so many, just so many, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. We just pray that they would feel your presence, God. God, we also want to praise you for all the people that we have been praying for that are well, God. We just pray that you would continue to heal their bodies and give them strength, God. Every day, more and more strength. God, just be with them and let them feel your presence. We do pray, God, for... Um, a lady in our Sunday school class that was sick today, God, we just pray for healing for her. And we pray for um, 
We pray for a man in our church that his son is just very critically ill. God, we just lift that family up to you. And we lift up the son that you would heal his body, God, that you would draw him close to you. They say there's no hope, but God, there's nothing that's too hard for you. And we just pray for you to give this family strength and for you to heal this young man or heal this man. He's not actually young anymore. Heal this man if that's your will, God. Just be with him and be very present. We just pray for miraculous healing if that is your will, God. And we just pray for his family, God, as they stand by and wait to the answer to their prayers, God. Just be with them. Give them peace. Let them feel your presence, God. God, we just pray. We pray for all the corruption in our government to rise to where people will open their eyes and their ears to the truth of this and they will see what has really been going on for years, God. They will quit quit sharing untruths, but just share truths from now on. God, we just praise you and thank you for all the many things that you do for us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my pray and share warriors, it is time to read Psalm 13. And everybody that's home in my house is already eaten. So I don't have to rush off of here to feed anybody. Okay. This is called Trust in the Salvation of the Lord. Um, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed against him. Lest those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Well, let's, let's kind of go back over some of that. Okay, well, we know that King David, a lot of times he was distressed. And a lot of times people were trying to hunt him down and kill him. But a lot of times he was distressed because of his sin, because of his unrepentant sin. So let's read what this says. Um, 13, 5, 6. The longing for the Lord's deliverance from sickness and from enemies is echoed throughout the book of Psalms. An abrupt change of tone occurs in this psalm when the psalmist confidently asserted that he was trusting in the Lord. But the first part of that was not about him trusting in the Lord. The first part of that, that was him calling out to the Lord to get the Lord to come and um, help him. He had sorrow in his heart daily, you know, and he felt like his enemy was exalted over him. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes. So he was troubled. He was troubled. But then at the very end, but I trusted in your mercy. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. So that was kind of a short, a short psalm. Let's go see. Let's go see what Proverbs 13 says. 
I don't know. It just popped into my head. Let's go see what it's about. Sometimes when I'm reading scripture, other things will pop into my head, and I have no idea what Proverbs 13 has in it. I don't know. Okay. Let me put my bookmark back over here. I'm always not being able to find my place in Psalm. Trying to keep it marked, but sometimes I forget to put it back in. So tomorrow we'll do Psalm 14. Okay, Proverbs 13. says, A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of a lazy man desires and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made rich. A righteous man hates lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and comes to shame. Righteousness guards him whose way is blameless, but wickedness overthrows the sinner. There is one who makes himself rich, yet has nothing, and one who makes himself poor, yet has great riches. The ransom of a man's life is his riches, but the poor does not hear rebuke. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked will be put out. By pride comes nothing but strife, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be dis diminished, but he who gathers by labor will increase. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. He who despises the word will be destroyed. But he who fears the commandment will be rewarded. This is kind of like what we were reading uh, in Psalm 119 about the word and God's statutes and walking in the word. And so kind of along the same line. The law of the wise is a fountain of life to turn one away from the snares of death. Good understanding gains favor. The way of the unfaithful is hard. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool lays open his folly. A wicked messenger falls into trouble, but a faithful ambassador brings health. Poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who regards a rebuke will be honored. A desire accomplished is sweet to the soul but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Evil pursues sinners, but to the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for, for the righteous. Much food is in the fallow ground of the poor, and for lack of justice there is waste. He who spares his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him promptly. The righteous eats to the satisfying of his soul, but the stomach of the wicked shall be in want. So just a little righteous and wicked and... Just a little comparison of the wicked and the righteous. A righteous man, a wicked man. Um, rich and poor. Foolish and not foolish. Prudent and foolish. So just a little comparison there. Just a little comparison. And I'm not going to read the study part of that. Okay, well, it is time to do a just lost Just went flying. Bible down. Okay. 
pages are so thin. Well, I don't know where my friend Josie is. I hope that she's okay. I haven't seen her. And so we'll continue praying for her. Many people are having a hard time getting over this variant of uh, the COVID. So it seems to be maybe a little stronger than the first one, but I, I, my opinion is it affects everybody different because we all have different body chemistries. We all have different levels of immunity built up. Some people have no immunity built up at all. I myself eat a lot of yogurt, and I think that helps. From time to time, I am on a multivitamin. I think that helps. But some people have underlying conditions, too. So I don't believe that. Um, I don't believe that everyone is affected the same. And everybody's not affected the same with the flu. Or pneumonia. Some people get it worse than others. I'm just looking at it as another disease. But I think it's sad that it's one that people introduced into us on purpose. Okay. Well, let's do a salvation message. We're not going to speak much about that. All right, let's see what we want to do today. I think tomorrow I am going to clean my desk off. I'm getting my old computer out. I'm going to set it up for Seth. My granddaughter is a genius, and she gave me some sites of where they did online uh, learning and I'm going to use some of those sites that are free and it's going to be so good. I'm kind of excited because I hope to make him learn more independently without me having to lead him through everything that we're doing um, to where he can be a little more independent and maybe I don't know. Maybe I can teach him to do a job, you know, on the keyboard. I don't know. The sky's the limit with God. Steps to peace with God. We all want to have peace with God. And so the way that we achieve peace with God is we accept his son as our savior. So steps to peace with God. Most people have an idea of what they believe it will take to be accepted by God. After all, who likes the idea of, of exiting this life without being on good terms with Him? Thankfully, it's possible to be certain that you've made peace with God, but the way must be chosen during this life. Here are the steps drawn from God's book, the Bible. Step 1. Understand God's purposes, peace, and eternal life. God loves you and wants you to experience peace and eternal, fulfilling life. The Bible says we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 5, 1. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10, 10. Why don't most people have this peace and the fulfilling abundant life that God intended for us to have? And so step two, admit the problem, our sin and separation. God did not create us like robots to automatically love and mechanically obey Him. God gave us a will and the freedom to choose. The first man and woman chose to disobey God and go their own willful way and will still make that choice today. This results in separation from God. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 for the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. 
People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Proverbs 14, 12. Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. Isaiah 59, 2. No bridge reaches God except one. So we are to step three. Discover God's bridge, the cross. Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. Though he was God's sinless son, he became a human, took our place, and paid the penalty for our sin, bridging the gap between God and us. The Bible says, For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2.5 Christ suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5.8 in Romans 6.23 Christ died for our sins. He was buried he was raised on the third day, 1 Corinthians 15, 3-4. God has provided the only way to forgiveness of sin and eternal life. But each person, each person must make a choice. You know, I was late and I didn't explain to you why I was late. I will in a little bit if I don't forget. Embrace the truth. Receive Christ. We must trust Jesus Christ as our Savior and receive him by personal choice. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. Revelation 3.20 I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. The Bible says to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he, became, he, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1, 12. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. John 3, 36. So what is your decision? Will you receive Jesus Christ now and trust in him alone for forgiveness and eternal life? The Bible says that the only way to find peace with God, the Bible says that's the only way to find peace with God. So admit your need, admit your need that you are a sinner in need of God's forgiveness be willing to turn from trusting in anything else for eternal life and trust only in Christ. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and came to life from the grave and is your only way to heaven. Or accept Jesus' offer to forgive your sins and come into your life as your Savior. You may want to tell him in words like these. So I'm going to say this prayer and I'm going to leave a space to where you can repeat. If you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, then now is the time of salvation. Please don't continue to put it off. We need to be saved now because we don't know when Jesus is coming. We don't know when he's coming back. So now is the time of salvation. Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior.
so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And this is uh, Good News Tracks. Good News Tracks. You may not can read it. I need to work on my camera. My camera is not very good on the bottom. Okay. Maybe I can do that tomorrow too. Got all kinds of things to do tomorrow. Got to get ready to start teaching our son again. I've got to get a curriculum together tomorrow. But I'm really excited. Like I said, I do most of it on the computer. Okay, if you, <clears throat> I'm sorry, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior just now, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, his Son. And the angels are rejoicing. The angels rejoice. They all rejoice in heaven when someone is saved through Jesus. So if you want to grow closer in your relationship with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, then read God's Word every day and start in Matthew just read a chapter a day or even a half a chapter. Just read something. Learn about Jesus, whom you just invited to be your Savior. Learn about Him. Read the Gospels. Read what Jesus did. And uh, read through the New Testament. And then read through the Old Testament. And pray. Pray to God every day. Take time to pray every day and praise. Find somebody. Find some type of music that you like that's Christian that you can listen to. And you can praise God every day. Um, I bought us something and I forgot that I was going to say. I've been kind of sleepy today. I don't sleep good at night anymore. My back and my hip. Every time I turn over, I wake up. Okay. Well, it is time. Wow, it's already time to do the blessing from God. Oh, follow the example of Jesus in baptism, too. That was what I was thinking. Pray for God to... <clears throat> send you to a church that preaches and teaches the Bible. Okay, Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace of Jesus in our country, and in the world. We do. All right, well, I am going to pray, and I'm going to get off of here, and I'm sorry I was late, but I was listening to Tom Hughes um, talk about prophecy and what's going on in the world, and he was doing a Q&A, so I'm going to go back and listen to the rest of that. So it was very interesting, and I was it was a live chat. So I was chatting with people in the chat room about Jesus and about that Jesus is coming soon and just really great things. All right. Well, I am going to pray, and I'm going to get off of here. I need a drink. My cup is so big, it just looks huge on these cameras. So I go to the side and get one. <clears throat> okay, well, let's pray. God, we just come to you again, God, and we just thank you for your word. We thank you that there are blessings with righteousness. There are blessings with obedience, God. 
there are missed blessings with unrighteousness and there are missed blessings with disobedience, God. God, we just pray for a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped, God. Where people will be proclaiming the name of Jesus so loud that everyone will hear. God, you told me one day, be loud and proud. Be loud and proud of your Christianity. Be loud and proud of your country. Be loud and proud. We do need to be proud of our Christianity and we do need to proclaim it um, boldly. Help us to proclaim your truths, God, in the gospel of Jesus boldly and unashamedly just to proclaim it, to just pray over people that are in need. There are so many people that are in need now. God, I thank you for um, the blessing that you gave us this week, the blessing of last month of getting our car up and running when it was, it did cost a lot, God, but you supplied what we needed to pay for it. And we're thankful for that. God, we're thankful for the blessing that you gave me for helping someone, for just giving all that I had in help. It's returned a hundred times, God, because that's how good you are and that's how faithful you are. I didn't even pray for that because I didn't even, once it left my hands, I wasn't even worried about it. But God, you gave me the opportunity to praise about it today. And thank you for that you do answer our prayers, God. Even though I didn't pray about that, I really didn't worry about it. Someone else was praying on behalf of me. So thank you for answering their prayer and building building their strength in Christianity also, God. God, I just thank you for all the people, God. Thank you for all the people, God that will learn about your word, that will maybe come to salvation, God. Please help me to be the vessel that you need me to be so that I can share your truth, I can share the gospel, and help me to be more diligent and more consistent about sharing uh, with others. God, just give me boldness. Help me to testify more. Help me to be more in your presence and to encourage others, God. There are so many people that need encouragement. Excuse me. God, just help me to be, or help us, whoever is here, help us all to be the Christians that you want us to be, that you have called us to be. Help us to walk out our callings that you have in our lives. I know I have a couple right now that I'm working on, God. Help me to be the finisher that I used to be. Help me not to give up, to diligently face things head on. God, I just pray for Josie. I pray for Josie and Austin, and I pray for healing for them. And I pray for Mr. Mike. He was at church today. I pray for continued healing for him and for the boys. And um, for our church family, God, I thank you for our church family and the fellowship that we have within our church family and the love and compassion and the way that we work together, God, to do what you want us to do, not to do what we want to do, what to do what we think you have called us to do. God, I just pray for safety this weekend as people travel. I pray for safety for them. I pray, God, that you would be with my granddaughter tomorrow as she goes back to South Texas, that you would keep her safe. That you would be with my son-in-law as he takes her to the airport and back, God, that you would keep him safe. 
God, I'm just so thankful to be your child. We're so thankful to be your children. Please order our steps in the ways that you want us to go. Help us to follow closely after Jesus and help us to continue to walk in the Spirit. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, my Pray and Share Warriors, I hope you have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome uh, tomorrow, which is Labor Day. I'm going to be laboring on Labor Day, but I'm going to be getting ready for school opening at my house on Tuesday. In just a different way. I'm kind of excited for a different way of doing it and just some different things that Seth can learn. We've been doing the ABCs and the one, two, threes and the shapes and all that. I want to do it a different way. And I think that doing it online is going to help. All right. Well, much love. God bless you all and your families. Much love and cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.